friends, today I'm going to take you all the way to North Carolina with me and we're going to do some antique shopping. We're also going to do some thrift store shopping and then I'm going to show you all of my finds and style them with you throughout my home. So I'm really excited to show you what I got. I found some fun stuff so I can't wait to take you along with me. If you've been following for a while, you guys know we go to North Carolina every single year, Oak Island to be exact. My great grandfather built a home on the island in the 1960s and my grandparents live there now and we have been going since my dad was a little boy. It's such a special place to us and every single year I go thrifting on the island and I also do some antique shopping in a nearby town called South Porch. So if you're looking for a place to vacation, you guys have to check out Oak Island and Southport especially is so quaint and just beautiful to visit. So I thought it would be fun to kind of take you guys along with me and show you what kind of uh, caught my eye and what I decided to purchase. So you guys know that I like to collect uh, vintage false graph pieces. So I already have that creamer I decided to leave it there. This crock caught my eye, but I thought $8 was just a little bit too high for a small one like that. And then I thought that this basket was actually a really, really cool find. I just, I, we don't have a lot of room in the, in the car to bring larger things like this back home. I did end up purchasing another basket though, which is kind of funny. I think it ended up being bigger than this one, but, um, I kind of regret not grabbing that little hamper. I thought that that was cute. $20 was a little bit high though. Now this is called Hoarders, this place that I'm in now. I usually find a lot of stuff at this particular store, but I didn't on our trip this year. Just I thought this shelf was pretty, but again, it was just too large. And then we always stop by the Habitat for Humanity and I scored this set of Italian dishes. I don't know anything about these. If you've seen these before, the bottom of the dishes just say made in Italy. They feel very heavy like some type of stoneware and I love that they're all chipped and sort of cracking. The glaze on them is cracked and the mugs didn't actually go with the plates so I got a great deal on those. She gave them the whole set to me for ten dollars um but here's a little bit more false graph i decided to leave it behind i just didn't need any more bowls like this i had enough now this next place that we visited is a really cool place I can't remember the name of it. I think it's Mermaid something, um, but it's closer to Southport. I'll try to have the details in the description below. This is a really cool shop. It's kind of a mixture of an antique shop and a thrift shop, but a little bit more curated, I would say. I think that, you know, actually, I think that the prices here were a little high for me. Lots of cool stuff, but like, as you can see, this little picture is pretty pricey even though I loved the color of it and I thought it was really beautiful. Um, I just thought that the, the price was a little high but they had some really cool neat items like that giant dough bowl and I loved this pine hutch was just absolutely gorgeous but there was no way on earth we were bringing something like that all the way back home to Michigan. I would have to come down and visit my grandparents and then haul that back with me on my own but I thought that this was really precious this little hamper um I don't know it just I, I thought it was cute and then I loved this display of ironstone pictures with all of the driftwood and just thought I would share it with you guys now this is kind of a regret I thought this was just a funky cool little metal basket and Sometimes when I watch footage back whenever I take you guys with me thrifting, it's almost like I see things <laughs> that I regret not buying. This is the Dozier Thrift Shop in Southport. I didn't find anything this year at this particular thrift shop, but I normally do. So they always have some neat things there and the prices are really good. Um, but my absolute favorite of all time is this Northrop Antique Mall. It's a really cool antique store and I've taken you guys here before. You can find other videos of this particular antique shop where I found some really neat things. Um, 
but sadly this year I didn't bring anything home with me from Northrop Antique Mall. There were some things that I really liked, but the prices were just a little bit high and there was nothing that I absolutely needed. Of course, my husband is always finding old <laughs> vintage toys. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Some of the booths changed around and some of my favorite, more primitive style booths were gone this year. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but it's still a really neat antique shop. I thought this print was pretty. I kind of caught my eye and so did this copper candlestick. But I have so many candlesticks, I just decided to leave it. I also uh, thought that this mallet was just so pretty, but it's just one of those things that it would just be for display and I just didn't, I couldn't think of a spot where I would put it, but isn't it unique? I've never seen one like this before. Um, the same thing goes for this little pie crimper. I just thought it was so unique and beautiful and I love the mixture of the wood and the white and the detail on there. I don't know. I just thought it was fun to share with you. I almost purchased this jar. I kept looking at it. I love vintage jars, but I have so many of these, you guys. It was just... Sometimes I just have to show some restraint, and I know I, <laughs> I knew I didn't need it. So these little dishes were really precious. A part of me really wanted to grab these, but again, I have enough white dishes. And I loved these little jars, but they were like 28 per jar, and I loved how they looked as a set. So I just left them there. Now at this uh, thrift shop, it was again more curated. It's also in Southport. Um, the prices were a little high, I would say, but I did end up finding this cool basket in one of the rooms and it didn't even have a price tag, but I asked the owner if I could buy it and he said, how about 20 bucks? So we also ended up going to a Salvation Army and I could not believe I found this like tile, this framed tile from that said Stuttgart on it. That's where my husband is from. I don't know, I had to buy that. Um, <laughs> I also grabbed this plate. It was at the Habitat for Humanity. So I went back there with my mom and sisters and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I did some research on the back stamp and I also grabbed these plaid kitchen towels. I don't know. I just thought the colors were really pretty. This lamp caught my eye and I'm kind of regretting not getting it. I just think it's a good solid lamp and it was like 16 bucks and I thought I could like rub and buff it maybe. I don't know. I left it behind. Now this plant looked better from far away but then as I got closer I could see it was a little bit cheap looking <laughs> and you could tell that it was uh, fake. So I left that behind. And then we went back to another thrift store and I found these little like coasters from Germany. Like what are the odds? I found two different things uh, from Germany and I just thought that was neat. So I grabbed these. They were half off. Hey friends, it is so good to be back from vacation. And of course my phone is just full of photos from our annual trip to Oak Island. I took so many and you know, it's kind of funny. I was just talking to my mom about how much I love to go to her house and flip through her photo albums, all the photos that she took of us when we were kids. And I feel like that is sort of lost today. We take all these photos on our phone, but a lot of times we don't ever print them out. They're just either on Facebook or Instagram. We don't have like that physical copy of them. And so when Lini reached out to me, I was so excited because this is exactly what I need in my life so that I can get these memories printed off and in my hand. So let me tell you a little bit about the Lini Amber 4x6 photo printer. First of all, setup is super easy, you guys. I have to admit, I really struggle with like tech stuff and it's just not, like I'm a creative, I, I struggle with stuff like this, but my husband is gone and can I just say, like he is not home today. I set this thing up all by myself with no help from my husband. It was that easy. <laughs> 
to set up. I went ahead and um, put the ink cartridge in and then I loaded the paper. It was that simple. If I can do it, anybody can use this thing. So don't be intimidated. Um, if you feel like this might be too complicated for you to figure out, no, you guys, it was so simple. <laughs> Then I just went ahead and I downloaded the app on my phone, which was very simple. I connected the app to my printer. They gave you step-by-step -step instructions exactly how to do it. And then I simply selected the photos that I wanted to print and I printed them. And you guys, this photo quality is amazing. I cannot believe how beautiful. I wasn't expecting the quality to be so sharp and so crisp. These are beautiful photos and I can't wait to get these into an album or frame them. They are just beautiful. I have so many more that I wanna print. I love the fact that the Lini photo printer is so small and you can store it easily. It's not this bulky thing that's gonna take up all of this room inside of your space. It's very convenient. I love the fact that it's dust proof, waterproof, and also fingerprint proof. I already mentioned the fact that it has excellent image quality, convenient storage, and it has easy consumable replacements as well. So guys, you've gotta get a hold of one of these. The Lini Photo Printer has true color rendering, thermal dye, sub printing tech high resolution, high photo quality, and true color rendering. You can also customize your photos in the Lini app. The Lini photo printer also has automatic lamination four layer technology. Up to five devices can connect simultaneously to your Lini photo printer, and you can share your memories and have fun with your friends. Stay connected and print whenever you want to. All right guys, so I am going to go ahead and include a product link to the Lini Amber 4x6 photo printer down in the description below, so make sure you check it out out, I will also have a special promo code for you to take advantage of. So don't forget to check out that description box so you can get all the details on this amazing printer. I know you guys are going to love it. I have been so impressed with it. It was easy to use, easy to set up, and I just can't wait to create so many wonderful memories with the Lini Instant Photo Printer. So make sure you check out the description. All right, so now I'm going to show you my haul, and I have to start off with this gorgeous oil painting. Okay, so I didn't actually find this in Oak Island. Literally days before we left, I saw this on Facebook Marketplace and I sent a photo of it to my dad because he was going to be in the area where I saw this um, painting. I asked him if he could get it for me and he was like, no, I just don't think it's going to work out. Well, you guys, my dad surprised me and he went and met up with the guy and bought it. It was listed for $65 and my dad offered him 50. Literally the sweetest thing ever. And so I thought I would try to look for a spot for this with you guys and show you some different options. I'm still not 100% sure. I thought about switching out the cow print and putting it here, but I wasn't in love with it here. I really love my little cow print <laughs> that I got <laughs> at the estate sale, and this was a little bit more dark and moody. So I don't think I love it there, but let me know what you guys think. I don't know. Um, another spot that I thought to actually try this painting was over on the opposite side of the living room by the couch. So I have these like vintage metal grates hanging on the wall, and I love the way they look. Um, but I just thought maybe some artwork on this wall would be pretty, so I went ahead and just tried it on an existing nail, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, I would center it on the wall or whatever, and I decided to put my flag back outside because I noticed it <laughs> in the video <laughs> sitting over there. But what do you guys think about artwork on this wall? I think this is definitely a contender. It's really pretty here. I could even do more than one piece on this wall. Um, I really liked it here, but I also really love my little metal crates on this wall. So I'm a little bit torn. Even as I'm watching this video back, I can't decide which I like more, the, the artwork or these crates. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I also decided to give it a try over in the entryway. Sometimes I feel like artwork would be pretty above my thrifted three-tiered basket but then sometimes I feel like it's too busy and it kind of takes away from the simplicity of the space. Another option that I really love is potentially creating a collage of artwork going up the stairs. I thought this was really pretty 
and I could sort of picture like a piece above it and beside it and like I just think it looks so pretty in other people's homes and so that's an option but then I was going up the stairs and I thought hey wait a second I've always wanted to put artwork right here on this wall it's just like empty as you go down the stairs every day now I know you guys don't get to see this angle a lot but I see this every single day multiple times a day look how beautiful the artwork looks here I do love my little heart basket that I had sitting there but for now I'm just setting it on the beam on the ledge there to kind of see if I like it I'll live with it for a couple of days um, I would I would center it on the wall. I wouldn't have it this low, but I think this spot is definitely um, a contender. I really like it here, so you'll have to forgive me. My little hooks are still in the beam from Christmas, but I don't know. I'm kind of liking it there. So this cutie little piece of pottery I also purchased in Oak Island at a thrift shop there, and I don't think I actually shared the footage of this particular shop with you guys it was kind of a last minute run but I just thought the little lilac or whatever flower that's supposed to be it was just really precious I love handmade pottery and there's a million places where I could put this little dish I think it's so cute I tried it over here by the door and between the chairs it would be perfect for keys right here like a little dish catch-all dish I tried it on the little side table here next to the couch but I'm thinking it could get knocked over pretty easily by the boys here anyways I just thought it was precious now this is another find that I didn't actually grab in Oak Island I came home to this wonderful happy mail and my friend Sarah from she holds dearly I'm sure you guys all are subscribed to her channel she is so talented and she is the sweetest most encouraging friend she sent me these books in the mail they are German I guess we have a theme going today they're from Germany and my husband is still trying to figure out what they are because of the cursive text um it's hard for him to read some of the words but they like match my little blue duck almost perfectly it's like the prettiest blue teal color and I love the binding and everything so the first place that I decided to try these books was over here in the built-in shelves by the front door um, I have some thrifted books there already and so I thought it would be fun to try them here and you can see Isaiah is chasing the cat and he was just being so cute all during this video I have to share this little clip with you guys <laughs> of him talking to the cat Okay, sorry. Let's get back to the video. Um, another place that I thought the books might look lovely is on the shelves in the sunroom. So I've been wanting to bring more color out here anyways, and I put them on the shelf out here, and I thought that they were really pretty. I kind of like them out here more, I think. Um, I don't know I just really love the pop of blue on the shelves for springtime and I do have some artwork there it has very little color in it but it does have a little bit of blue um, like in the water and I feel like it kind of pulls that blue out a little bit more but anyways so I just kind of stuck them here for now um, I think that they look really pretty here we'll see now I also like I told you before grabbed this scalloped dish now the stamp, the back stamp, I believe it says Homer Laughlin. And so I did some research on the little numbers below the stamp. And apparently this plate was made in America in 1913. So it is so heavy, you guys. Oh my goodness. I thought it would be pretty here on the wall instead of the false graph dish and this is how I hang plates by the way I have had those plates hanging on the wall for probably two or three years now and it's super scary because you're kind of like is this really gonna work but basically you got these little plate hangers wet and you press them onto the back of the plate and even this false craft dish has like ridges in the plate and it has held up great all of these years but I was kind of just like feeling the difference in weight to see if 
these stickers would hold up <laughs> this plate. I'm so nervous. I remember I was nervous the first time I used these, but they have worked great and I just have to decide if I want to go ahead and give it a try and hang this scalloped one on the wall. Let me know what you guys think. I also grabbed this basket at the, th the same thrift store that I got the little piece of pottery. I'm sorry I didn't grab footage there. Um, it was $16, I think. A little pricey for a thrift store in my opinion, but I loved the lid on it and I thought it might be perfect actually um, like upstairs in my bedroom to store books that I usually have just on the ground next to my bed. I don't know. So that's where I'm going to put it for now, but I just feel like it's pretty versatile. It could be used in a multitude of ways. Um, here I have it just next to my bed and I, like I said, I just decided to put my Bible in there and my little journal. I can throw my highlighters in there and that way there's not a pile of books <laughs> next to my bed. Usually there's a couple of other books along with my Bible. So I thought that was a neat find. And here are those fun plates that I found. She gave me the entire set for $10. And like I said, they say made in Italy on the back of them. So I don't know anything else about them. I just know that they are very um, heavy and I love that they are so unique. I would love to at some point have some sort of plate rack in my home. Every English cottage that I look at has like plates on display and I, I think I might have my husband build one and I just thought that these would be great to add to that if he ever builds one. Um, and then these little German dishes, people are always asking for coasters at my house and I have a couple of sets, but I just thought, hey, these might make fun little coasters and they have little scenes from Germany on them. They were half off that day, so I didn't pay $4 each. I paid two each for them. And for now, I'm just going to put the stack of plates, both, both sets of plates in my corner cupboard with all of my other white dishes and Isaiah's just being silly eating some leftover beef jerky from the car ride home. <laughs> he was just cracking me up and making me laugh on this particular day. So that's where I'm going to put the plates for now until I can get them on display. Um, and then lastly, I ended up grabbing that big basket that was $20. Um, I just thought it was a really nice basket and it's definitely vintage it's very sturdy and it's very large. I don't know if you can tell how large it is <laughs> um, on camera, but I was thinking it might go really good in my kitchen if I ever move this table back into the living room. And yes, I'm always finding things. <laughs> my boys are always tucking Legos in everywhere. But for now, I think it's just going to go in the basement until I can find a spot for it. I just thought that $20 was a really good price for that sturdy vintage basket. And then I have the Stuttgart tile. Guys, what do I do with this? Like, it was one of those things that, I don't know, I just felt like I had to buy it. It's where my husband is from. He was born in Stuttgart. What do I do with it, though? Give me some ideas. Maybe, like, a pot holder. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can pop it out of the frame. So if you remember these... Um, like kitchen linens here they are i washed them already and they look really cute in the kitchen i think they were like two bucks each or something and you'll have to forgive the mess i was making homemade chicken <laughs> and rice soup but yeah they've come in handy and i really love them i love the plaid and the blue and the cream colors on them so that is my oak island north carolina slash southport thrift and antique haul. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all these finds and what I did with them. I love your opinions. I love it when you weigh in. So let me know what you think about all of these different things and where you think I should put these items in my home. And anyways, it's just always fun taking you guys along with me as I uh, decorate my home and hopefully encourage you and show you that you really can create a beautiful home on a budget. So I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.